Welcome back to SCLC Today. Of course, joining me is our president, Dr. Charles Steele, Jr. Dr. Steele, this week, uh, coming up, the 60th anniversary of SCLC? Yes, uh, Maynard, uh, Valentine's Day um, will actually be 60 years that we've been in business. I mean, that's amazing, man. Uh, people thought that we have arrived and they got off the bus. And then some was on the train. And back then we didn't have many flying in terms of the airplane. But we are here. We made it. We survived. This has not been an easy 60 years. Oh, man, it's been tough. Mr. Mr. Eaton, it's been very, very tough. I just thank God that I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> it's been tough. Many people say we don't need SLC anymore. But it's gone full circle. It's full circle now. Is back upon us. You always need SCLC. SCLC is a gift from God. That's what many people don't realize. Because civil rights is still needed, or SCLC, the way it was founded and who led it, is still needed? Because of the historicity. You have to have a foundation. The historicity of SCLC dictates that we are the foundation. You can't have this building to be upwrecked in a, in a proper way of construction. Uh, in terms of, of surviving the collapse of a building, the foundation must be uh, very strong with the infrastructure. We are the infrastructure of the civil rights movement. So there are other organizations, but this one you think has a cachet and the name and the credibility there. Absolutely. In regards to all of the successfulness accomplishments in terms of the civil rights movement, SCLC has participated or led all of the successes in terms of, of civil rights, with the exception of Brown versus Board of Education, 1954. That's the only one that we didn't lead. You've been here twice as the chair, I mean, the president and CEO. I've uh, been here twice. But also during that interim, the SCLC was almost on its death door, right? Absolutely. And, you know, many times people consider the white citizen council, the Ku Klux Klan, as the enemy, but it was from within. We were the enemy to ourselves because we have been so successful. You, what's, what's the lesson in that? The lesson is that is that you always have to go another step. You always have to have another vision. You never can relax and rest on your laurels. You always have to go to the next level, and we were not prepared. To do that. So internal struggles almost was our downfall. Absolutely. Not external stuff. Internal was the problem. Now, do you think President Trump, 2017, civil rights still needed? SCLC still needed? Well, it's evident. More, regardless, let me just say this, Maynard. Regardless who the president is, I don't care who it is, you always need a civil rights organization. And the pillar and the infrastructure, the foundation, has proven itself to be SCLC. I have some students that I teach at Clark Atlanta University who question whether or not the civil rights movement has really done much for them or where we come in over these past 60 years. Well, as brilliant and as great a job uh, President Barack Obama did, he couldn't have gotten there <laughs> without SCLC. It was SCLC that laid the way. It paved the, the way for him to become the first African-American president. Not because he's so smart. My grandmama was the smartest person I ever met in my life. <laughs> Not because he went to an Ivy League school. It was, and let's give credit and, and kudos to the right instrument or vehicle that got us there. It was the Civil Rights Movement led by SCLC. Where do we go now, sir? Uh, where do we go now? We go back to the streets to prepare again for the suites. We prepared in the streets to get to the suites, but we left the streets and stayed in the suites. Now we've been kicked out of the suites. When you don't have the Affordable Health Care Act, when you don't have uh, people that can actually afford to provide a meal or decent housing. Decent housing. Decent housing for the families. 
then you have a problem. You're in the street. You just don't realize it. So that's why we'll end on this note. This year, you're preparing to re reinvigorate the Poor People's Campaign. Is that correct? We are going to reinvigorate it. We're going to bring about the teachings of what got us here. See, many times people think that uh, because of the Civil War, we don't need to talk about it. Or because of slavery, we don't need to talk about it. But that's what gives you your re reinvigoration, as you mentioned. The reinvigoration of the historicity of where we've been to, to catapult us to where we're going. And the emphasis, once again, is going to be on poor people. The emphasis is always on poor people. You got 50 million people in this uh, country that can't afford, 50 million, that can't afford a $400 emergency. You got 150 million people who, who actually make $35,000 or less. You, you, you have people without hope. You have people without uh, the participation of this society that they just given up. That's why when you see the unemployment list from the federal level, they are counting people who are involved on a daily basis, which the majority of them has given up hope. They're not even in the, the stats of the... the uh, not even counted. Not even being counted. Compilation of being counted. Because they're giving up. They're giving up. But we're not giving up. This is SCLC Today. We've been talking to Dr. Charles Steele, Jr. See you again soon.